Hey guys, Heidi here, Texas Art and Soul, and founder of Paint Party Headquarters. And I am excited today to interview someone from New York City. Well, she used to live in that area, New York now. And her name is Debbie. Debbie, welcome. Thank you for being here. Hi, Heidi. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so tell everybody, what do you do in the art world? Uh, let's see. It, it started um, 20 years ago when I did a faux finish in my bathroom. We had just put in a new bathroom and I convinced my husband, you know, it's just paint if I mess it up, you know, we'll paint over it, don't worry. And I took my beige tile to Home Depot and bought like several different shades of beige and I bought cheesecloth and glaze and I didn't know what I was doing, but I just fooled around. And the contractors were still there and they're like, oh my God, you've got to quit your day job. You're better than any professional we've ever seen. I'm like, get out of here. And he's like, no, I'm serious. Look at those corners. I'm like, really? So that just like inspired me. I never had the opportunity to paint. And I went to a Catholic business high school and the guidance counselors would not let me take art, which I wanted to take. They forced me to take algebra. And I'm like, Ugh, math is my worst subject. <laughs> but I... <laughs> So um, I guess I was just, you know, um, a, a hidden artist waiting for it to come out. And it came out in 1998 with my bathroom. And uh, then my sister-in-law asked me to do a room in her house. And I did. Then, like, her friend saw it. And I was still working full-time. I was working. Um, by the time I left in 2001, I was working for the same attorney. I ran his nine-attorney law firm for 23 years. And... Um, you know, commuting an hour and a half a day. And I just felt like a, a robot, but that was all that I knew how to do. I was great at it. But um, on September 11th, 2001, I was, um, we were in the city that day. I was just getting to my office. I got out of the train station and heard sirens like unbelievable. And I said, wow, that, that's the worst fire. It's, you know, it must be close. There were just sirens all over. Went up to my office, the uh, 60th floor. We were about two miles away. I was in Midtown Manhattan and everybody was in the conference room looking at the window saying, I think a small plane just hit the World Trade Center and they're on the phone with their friends trying to find out what happened. And then boom, we saw the second explosion. I didn't see the actual plane, but just like the horrific you know, ball of flames we saw and w we knew it was bad. And um, still not quite sure what was going on, but my boss had a TV and we were hearing like terrorism, but there's no way to describe it. I just still feel like I was in a horror movie. I was part of a horror movie. It was so surreal. My husband and I decided that, uh, I didn't know that I was trapped in the city, but I was, but my daughter had just started, um, college like the week before that a freshman she never went on a sleep away so she was hysterical on one phone my husband on the other it was just a horrible time so we decided that I was going to walk from 42nd up to 110th street to spend the night at her dorm uh, thank god my days of high heels were over and I had flat shoes on and um as I'm walking to the elevator my boss follows me with work since you're leaving early today, could you do this at the dorm? Like, like it was just another day. Like we just didn't see buildings come down. Like he just didn't say that he thought his friend got killed. And that just sums up what I put up with for 23 years with him. He was just such a toxic person, always thinking about his work and himself. And that was just like a defining moment for me. And I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, the money's good, but it's not about money anymore. It's just, uh. and then I just quit and I didn't go looking for a job because by then I was just so fed up. I'm like, I'm not working for another lawyer. I'm not working for anybody else ever again. I have to, if I'm going to make a change at 40, I want to try to do something for myself and see if I can make a go of this newfound passion that I love so much. So I took like little hand painted wine glasses. I went to a local real estate office and I showed her pictures of my little faux finish I did in my bathroom. The next week later, she called me for a job in her house and I did a $2,000 job in a large room in her house. I'm like, all right, this is great. And uh, somebody I know gave me the opportunity to have a little shop that I called something different where I gave... Um, um, everything was hand painted. I hand painted glasses, lazy Susans, mailboxes, toilet seats, baby clothes, anything you could think of. And it was a, it was a sleeper town. But on um, Christmas Eve, we had a hundred people come in and buy ornaments. 
because we did little hand painted ornaments and my daughter was a teenager then and she would do the personalization it, it was very cool oh and i also had a little separate room in the back that i turned into a little art studio where i would give painting lessons and kids' birthday parties. I started, you know, with four-year-olds, giving, teaching them how to paint. I mean, back then it wasn't called paint parties, but you know, I guess basically that's just what it was. And I loved it. I loved teaching. And over the course of the years, I've taught, I'd have to say, hundreds, hundreds of people. From four, the oldest person that I know of was age 80. It was her daughter's 50th birthday party. And it, it was just so much fun. I loved it. But I still continued to do my uh, decorative painting, you know, walls and finishes and refinishing furniture and cabinets, which I still do. But um, now I'd love to uh, get down off of the ladders and scaffolds eventually and uh, focus on paint parties and, um, you know, painting courses maybe. So I thank you, Heidi, for opening up my eyes to this because I was doing this on my own. And, you know, uh, with a local restaurant, I had done the walls in their restaurant. They just opened up. I said, you know what? To attract more people, why don't we have like a paint party here and see what happens? And it's been working out great. Uh, for two years, we did it. We had to take like a year hiatus because both of our schedules were very busy. But now we're starting up again, uh, thanks to you. Oh. And um it's great. They hold, sometimes I get like 50 people, 40 to 50 people in her restaurants, and she offers a full hot buffet dinner and a glass of wine and my painting. I know I don't charge enough for my part, but, you know, <laughs> I started out with her at that price, and, you know, going forward in new places, I know to raise my prices, but it, it's working out great, and um, I have one one on Monday, and I'm, uh, I have a local pizzeria restaurant around the corner from me. I'm doing that Wednesday. So uh, off to a little start again, and I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to it. Wow. Okay. So there is so much in there. I can't <laughs> it all down. Like, but, I mean, just, I think just so much like, you know, everybody experienced 9-11 in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I remember the exact time it happened. I remember what was happening, and I was in Florida at the time. You know, but the way it impacted us and our family and our country, and then to meet somebody who actually saw it from the window versus us watching it on TV and just, yeah. I mean, it's just so scary. And then it's like the idea that, you know, that moment like totally changed the next, yeah. the rest of your life. You know? It did. It, it really, really did. It gave me such clarity. Like, I don't know how I'm going to make this work. This is financial suicide because my daughter just started a private college. But my husband's like, oh, right. If, you know, if you feel like you want to do it, we'll give it a try. And if not, you know, you could always just get another job. You know, I get people smiling at me and thanking me for teaching them to paint or for doing a room in their house. And I make them so happy and they cry when I'm done. And it, it's just a, a different way of life. And it's such a wonderful feeling. And so many people tell me, you know, with the painting, oh my God, this is so much cheaper than therapy. I used to have a group of ladies, yeah, yeah. I used to have a group of ladies come to my house and then it dwindled down, but two ladies, they were friends, they wouldn't stop coming. Like for two years, they would come every week and just sit for an hour and a half and paint and have coffee and they loved it. And I, you know, I enjoyed it too. Yeah. Well, and then you get to know them. That's what I love so much too about this job is, you know, I was talking with somebody the other day and she's like, you know, only cool people go to paint parties. It's people that want to have fun. It's people that are hanging out, you know, yeah. and it's like, um, you know, we get to be there a part of it. You know, yes, we're hosting it or we're putting it on and we're doing all the background stuff, but that doesn't take away from, we still have the full social aspect of it. And I've met many new friends through it who I'm still, you know, friends with today from, just teaching a paint party so yeah it's true it's a great experience all around yeah and definitely cheaper than therapy yes <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i know you've taught hundreds i mean you're definitely you you were probably doing this before the 2006 2007 official painting with a twist started right oh is that how long it started yes absolutely 2001 i opened my shop and then um um, I don't know if you ever heard of Donna Dewberry, but back then she was like a force, you know, in the, in the painting world. She developed this one stroke method of painting. But anyway, I did it and it worked out great. I learned cool techniques that sped up the painting process and um, people loved it. I would have uh, cl little classes in the back of my um, shop. 
on Saturdays. And then uh, people would come and ask me if I would do painting parties and I would do it there. But then they would say, oh, I'm having a 50th birthday at my house. Would you come to my house? Mm -hmm. So I would bring like wooden trays or whatever I thought would, would be a nice thing for them to paint. Uh, we would paint ornaments and, you know, it became this little thing and it was great. Not called what it is now, but, you know, basically it was the same thing. Well, you know, build momentum. I mean, people, you know, Bob Ross, you know, everybody's been teaching paint, painting lessons in some sort. Yes, yes. You know, adding that more of the social aspect. It's more of an experience than mm -hmm. Right, that's the therapy. word. Mm -hmm. And what is, okay, what is, if you could choose one, I know there's many exciting things about paint parties, but what's one, one of your favorite things about teaching paint parties? You know, I love that people come in and like they're scared, like I never painted before. I never had a paintbrush in my hand. This is going to come out horrible. You're going to have to do it for me. I'm like, don't worry, trust me, you're not. And by the end of it, like the hour and a half or two hours later, they are so excited and giddy that they can't believe that they were able to do that. Yeah. And, you know, that that's what I find most rewarding. I love seeing people who take nothing and turn it into something you know and I feel like that was what my life was about my business I started out with absolutely nothing and somehow here I am 20 years later almost you know still able to it's developed and pivoted and stuff like that but I'm still getting to do what I love and I admire anybody and people tell me oh I can't I don't know how to do this and it's never too late just do it you know J just try Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's right. There's so, and you know, my friend Jenny, she talks about, she's, she's actually, you know, the founder of the hundred hearts project.org. If you are wanting to look it up. And she um, said this quote when I interviewed her one time and I just love it so much. She's like paint, paint parties is the gateway drug to a creative life. And I think it's so true. Yeah, like it even is. if you're not really sure where you're wanting to go or you're a fine artist and you really want to sell your paintings, you know, if you're not selling them, have a paint party and then put your paintings up for sale at your paint party. Like, it's just a way to meet so many new people and to have Yeah, that. it's true. It's true. Because I didn't start really painting paintings like I have in my background until three years ago when um, a manager of a local Bloomingdale's furniture gallery called me. They had been to my website and saw all the decorative painting that I had done. And they called me in and I thought, oh, they want me to do a wall in their showroom. But they said, do you do abstract art? And I'm like, uh, I do now. What do you have in mind? <laughs> and they just want their wall, wanted their walls, their vignettes of furniture decorated with art. So when people walked through, they would stop and look at the furniture, you know, and it really like enjoy it. Out. And get the whole effect with art in there. And they let me keep it up for six weeks. And through that, an art consultant... Um, called me and said, I'd love to represent you. I love your work. And I'm like, oh my God. And I had no idea what to sell my paintings for. So I called a friend I knew that had an art gallery and he helped me. And what I thought was like, oh, this only took me a couple of hours. If I get $300 for this, this is great. And he said, absolutely not. For that size, you're charging $1,800. And I'm like, no way. But I did because I asked another interior designer who was also an artist and she said the same thing, $1,800. I'm like, all right, then they know better than me. And I just stuck to those prices. So I'm turning to other avenues in the meantime. And painting parties is a great way just to get your name out there and get to meet people. And you never know who you're going to meet. You know, I have a bad habit of like, I heard somebody use the expression, like, don't get into other people's pocket. You know, like just because I feel like, oh, I would never spend that much money for that or I could do that myself. I wouldn't hire anybody. But you don't know. So you could be, there could be a person that makes like $300,000 a year at your painting party, you know. So just don't discount who you're working, who you're working with and, you know, you never well, know. Yeah, and it's so true. Somebody um, very wise told me, she said, don't apologize for other people's situations. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's so true because, you know, I, I throw an event. I mean, it's all what you believe. And I know sometimes people are like, no, but here's what it's in the account. You know, yes. But maybe the person who, is, you know, barely has enough money to buy, maybe they're not the market you're trying to reach for somebody who wants to go out and spend $40 plus food, plus drinks, you know. But there right. is a market for everything, just like there's a market for that $1,800 painting. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't sit here and be the Walmart of every situation, right? You know, there's a time and a place and exactly. we're trying to be 297. We're, we're not able to feed our family. And if we can't feed our family, we can't help 
other people too. Right. And you know what I'm finding? I think as an artist, I think we have that special kind of heart. We're just yeah. different. And we, oh, we're people pleasers. And I'm like, I'll, I'll do things for free to make people happy. And then it's like, that's stupid. You know, we don't look at it as a business and we still have to provide for our family. Just because a dentist likes us and wants to be liked, are they going to fill my tooth for free? <laughs> Absolutely not. I had an electrician come in my house to change an outlet. He was in my house less than five minutes and charged me $300. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm afraid of an original piece of art that took me hours to create, you know, I mean. It wasn't just hours. This is, you know, decades of you learning techniques. Exactly. Yeah. And developing it. Yeah. And it took me a long time too. I think you're right. I think as creative people, we have this we feel more, we're more emotional, we're more mm -hmm. in tune with other, I mean, and it can be exhausting, you know, when, yes. you're, when you're around people with a different energy, it's almost like we suck in that energy of whoever we're around because uh -huh. we're just more empathetic, I think, you know, yeah. not to say anything against other types of people, but I think creatives especially have that emotional, like, oh, you like it, you know, because it was fun for me. Okay, I'll only do it for $20, you yeah, know? Yeah. I'm like, you know, I mean, it took me many years to get over that too. Like, wait a minute, you know, they're just throwing stuff out, wanting me to do it. And then I'm staying up till midnight and then it's not even paying my bills and I'm working another job. Wait, something is wrong. You exactly. Know? And that's what I've been going through. Over the years, I've donated over $20,000 worth of art to wow. a couple of high-end interior design events in the city. I'm like, oh, well, this is going to be great. I'm working for one of the top designers in the city. And it's great for the moment. But then, like, when they need art, they won't come to me. They'll go, like, buy it online from, you know. And it, it's, it becomes aggravating. I mean, I still love mm -hmm. to give. I believe in the causes, but it does get frustrating. Like, I just did something. I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to be on a TV episode on Saturday, George to the Rescue, uh, NBC here in New York. That's one of the top, you know, it's a big station. That's a awesome. designer that I work with asked me if I would paint a couple of murals for two autistic boys because the, the premise of the show is they uh, come in and transform a, a family's lives, you know, like a usually there's a someone that's sick or hurt a child or one of the adults in the house so th this family has two autistic children and their lives were completely upside down so anyway the designer renovated the house and she asked me and i wound up painting 13 murals wow i was there over 50 hours when i had a deadline i was there till like 11 o'clock at night painting everybody else had gone home they left me the lockbox and I enjoyed doing it and seeing the family's reaction it was definitely, definitely worth it. But you still have that part of you that, like you said, my God, 50 hours, who, who else gives up their time like that and takes money away from their family? I could have been on a job making money and not worrying where's my next job coming from, you know, but you know, it's all good. I, I do it because I feel like God gave me the opportunity to change my life and do something that I enjoy doing. So that's just my way of giving back and saying, you know, thank you. Thank you yeah. for giving me the courage to take that step and quit and follow my passion. That's, a, that's awesome. Yeah, and there's always that balance. You know, we wanna give, you know, there's places where, you know, we give free of our time or we give fundraising and stuff like that. But then, yeah, you have to like always no, okay, if I do this, am I going to be resentful? That's what I always tell somebody. Right, you don't want to be bitter about it. Mm -hmm. No, when you're doing art, that is the last place you want to be, is painting yes. on a wall mad, right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it's not fun. So yeah, I think as long as you know, it's in tune with you, there's people that, you know, they have the means. So the paint party is more of a social fun thing. And if they can, you know, give it away and that's how they want to spend it and they're uh -huh. You know more power to them so i'm always like well feed your family first once you know your family's fed and your bills are paid then the extra overflow of course you know yeah absolutely and, and another I, thing i go ahead i'm sorry oh no you go ahead I, I just realized another thing i want to thank you for is part of that project was i had to do lettering like a saying on the wall and normally for my paying jobs i would go you know there was this company that would do it. And now that I see what it is, I realized they probably had a cricket and printed it out and sold it to me for like a hundred dollars and I would do it. But you know, I didn't want to lay out any money. I wanted to do it myself. And when I learned from you about vinyl cutters 
and should I, should I, well, I made the investment, I bought a Cricut and it was great for the project. The lettering came out super crisp, but now because of you, I know that now I could add some lettering to my projects, you know, cause I was afraid the paint parties were becoming kind of stale. And then I saw people doing lettering. I'm like, oh, I can't paint lettering. I, I suck at lettering, but now knowing, now that I have the Cricut, and like just seeing the one with thankful or October, I mean, it's just simple, but beautiful. It adds so much to it. So I'm looking forward to adding, you know, cricket, you know, lettering into my paint parties as well. Oh, you're so welcome. And it's, yeah, it's been a game changer for me. And I think that the balance is mixing where we're still teaching painting and mixing and the paint part of it, plus adding the, the sentiment of, you know, a word that's going to be powerful for their home, you know, so it's not like just going to Target and buying a sign or Hobby Lobby yeah. buying a sign. They're actually still creating something and still getting that's out personalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can hang. So, and um, okay. So tell us, you know, what is your ultimate goal? Where do you see yourself in what five years, maybe? I mean, I know you've had a lot of fun, fun time. So what are you looking forward to? Now? Yes. Yes. Uh, five years. I'd like to not have such a crazy hectic life where I'm, you know, worrying about where my next decorative painting job is coming from. Cause that's the bulk of my money where I could get down off of ladders and scaffolding. I was up 68 feet once uh, yeah. restoring, restoring a local uh, church cathedral. Um, I bet that was an awesome job though. It was. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just want to have a, um, to be more consistent, to not, you know, right now my life is a one day I'm doing a decorative painting job, then Monday night I have a, a paint party, Tuesday I'm back on the ladders, Wednesday I have a party. I just want it to be more even because we take care for our, we take care of our 90 plus year old moms that live with us. Oh, wow. And, and I help uh, babysit my grandchildren. So um, You're busy, it's just. Right? It's crazy. So I would like to get down off of the ladders, eventually sell my paintings, work better, you know, be better at marketing my art, finding the right audience for my art, and also doing paint parties, going, you know, gun ho into paint parties. I, what I did last night, I watched a little uh, video and I did my first uh, buy, sell, swap. I joined a local group and I put it there. So let's see if, if that helps any. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, that's so great. So, okay, so somebody out there is probably watching and maybe they're somewhere doing something and they thought about this. What advice would you give them if they're thinking maybe I should try this? Just do it. Just try. I mean, I started from absolutely nothing. I didn't pick up a paintbrush until I was age 40. And, you know, if you enjoy something, if you if it's something you're passionate about, you will find a way to make it work. I mean, I'm up till four o'clock in the morning painting sometimes and then or doing my administrative work. And then I have to get up at seven o'clock to get ready for a job. And I'm exhausted, but I'm also exhilarated because I'm doing something that I enjoy and something that I love. And I'm a quiet and shy and introverted person. So you do have to force yourself to do things that you don't like. Like I never thought I would be networking. I go to local networking events to meet people. But through that, I've gained a lot of exposure, a lot of work. And, you know, you just have to do what's best for you. If they're, especially now with social media, I don't take advantage of it the way I should. I mean, I have an Instagram account and a Facebook fan page, but because of my crazy life. I'm not consistent the way I should be, which is silly because those are free platforms available to us. And, you know, it, it upsets me that I don't get to take advantage of it, which is another reason if I'm not, you know, all over the place climbing up and down ladders, I could actually sit at a desk for more than 10 minutes at a time and focus on growing my audience the right way. Um, yes. But yeah, just do it. Like even if, if you want to bake cupcakes, just be the best cupcake baker you could be. If you want to walk dogs, learn everything you can about walking dogs and just put yourself out there, get little business cards made up. I sat at a craft fair where I paid $50 for the table. And I had a little mini photo album of the walls I had done in my bathroom. And somebody took my card and said, my neighbor is renovating her house. The neighbor called me. And when it went over there, her interior designer friend was there. To this day, 18 years later, I'm still working with that interior designer. So That's you just awesome. never, you never know what actions you take. You know, it may not be immediate, 
I still get calls 10 years later from people that hold on to my card because my business card, I have a, I'm standing in front of a mural I did where the dog is painted and everybody's like, oh my God, the dog is painted. They, they love the business card. And 10 years later, I get calls. So, you know, it may not be immediate, but just do it. Just go for it. You'll be happy that you did. You don't want to live with regrets. Yes, that's good. And that's the thing. Like, what's the worst that can happen if you try? Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Nothing really, nothing bad really happens from just trying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it's so um, true. You have so much wisdom. Tell us how they can find you. If they want to contact you, maybe they want to hire you for some kind of job or maybe they're local and they want to hire you for a paint party. How can they find you, Debbie? Uh, my website is my name, Debbie Viola, V like violin, V I O L A dot com. Of course, I don't have any page about a paint party on my website, which I have to work on that also. Um, I'm on Facebook, both under my name, Debbie Viola, and my uh, Facebook business page is Art by Debbie Viola. So you could okay. find me there. Um, you know, my website, my phone number. Should I give out my phone number? I'm happy to do yeah. that. No. Okay. <laughs> that website and the Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. You could contact me, send me a message and email. I'd be happy yeah. To you're good on YouTube. We don't know how. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. No, I'm not giving out my phone number. <laughs> I'm trying to keep that one off the, the thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I have had so much fun talking to you and I know that um, our viewers hopefully will get so much from this and it was so, um, generous of you to share your story about 9-11. So thank you for that too. Oh, thank you. In fact, I, I started writing a book with the goal of the end of the year because so many people I come in contact with, like you have such an inspiring story. And I, I hate to tell the story because I'm always afraid the person I am speaking to may have lost someone that horrific day. And for that reason, I hesitate, but everybody just finds it so inspiring. So um, they're encouraging me to write a book and talk about inspiration and hope after you know being part of that horrific day so uh that's what i'm working on now in my spare time <laughs> and in your spare time yeah your ladders and <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i i think you should too i think it's just um a testament of you know when people have that defining moment they can mm -hmm. either choose to continue the same path or something right almost forces you into a different life that you're thankful for later. Exactly. And Heidi, I would just like to thank you because um, somehow I got on your email list and you were sending me emails for year, a couple of years, I guess. <laughs> and I would be on a job and I'd open the email and watch your, your video while I was uh, painting a mural or refinishing somebody's cabinets. Um, that, that's how I would follow you. And then when you started offering paid things, I'm like, I'm not doing it. I am not doing it. I know enough. I'm not paying anybody else anything. And then I just said, you know what, what the heck, um, you know, for the price of whatever it is, like uh, Starbucks every day, not that I drink Starbucks, but I'm sure that's all that it amounts to. Mm -hmm. What is the big deal? Let me just try. And if I don't like it, I'll just stop it. And oh my God, it's been wonderful. It's just such a community of like-minded people. We're at all different stages. Like just because I've been painting 20 years, I don't want anybody to feel intimidated because trust me, you know, um, you shouldn't be. Um, if you have the desire and you just want to give it a go, all you can do is try. And anybody will think that you are phenomenal because they're all beginners that probably have never painted before. So don't let your fear overrule you. And, you know, I, I should be talking to myself now because I have so many things I want to do to further my paintings. I call interior designers that I don't know. And I don't do that because I'm afraid, but, you know. Um, <laughs> But I have to follow my own advice. But it's true. Like, don't don't hold yourself back. Just give it a shot. Even if you have a little painting party in your house with people that you know, just test it out and see. And what's the worst that can happen? They, you know, nobody's happy with it. But you're going to be surprised because I'm always amazed when I walk around. Everybody's painting is different, but they all look so nice, and they're all so happy that they did it. So yeah. you know, just you, you never know. Oh my gosh. I'm just so glad. <laughs> yeah, just do it. And thank you for saying that because I think no matter what, you've been doing this for 20 years, right? And mm -hmm. yeah, I've been doing this for uh, entrepreneurship for over a decade. And I think the fear, I think, the, I think this is the differentiator. The fear never goes away. 
no matter Never. where you're at, on what stage, because you're always looking forward to another goal, another thing, another yeah. scary, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Fear never goes away. It's always going to be there. And it's the people who either, you know, take action through fear regardless, or right. just they let that fear stop them forever. And so yes. you're the, a true example of somebody who, you know, takes the fear head on. So I think you should make those calls to the interior. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> To do it. When I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, message me and let me know you did it because I think you have so much talent and you know you're so confident. So just you know. Oh, thank you. Muster up that courage and do it. All they can see is no. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, everybody out there, thank you for listening. Let us know in the comments if you like this, if you want to hear more of these, and what your biggest takeaway is. So tell us your biggest takeaway from this interview. And Debbie, thank you so, so much. Any final thoughts before you go? Oh, Heidi, thank you so much for having me. And um, painting is just a wonderful relaxation. So many people tell me it's, uh, you know, you're so much cheaper than therapy. And it is, you could just lose yourself and just, you know, drown in your own creativity. And whether it comes out good at first or not, who cares? You know, you're doing something that it just takes your mind off of the everyday pressures of life. And mm -hmm. what's going on in the world today is just horrific and scary. So it's great to have that place where you could just forget about all of that and just focus on something that you're making. Yeah, very true. It is way cheaper than therapy. Yes, yes. And it's great to share and it's great to share it. I keep forgetting. I take it for granted, but I keep forgetting that, you know, it's a gift that I have and it would be a shame to to not share it with people because there are people out there looking for it. And I have to keep reminding myself of that every day. Yeah, that's so true. So many people are like, Oh, especially in the South, there's so many already people doing this. Guys, I'm telling you, there's still not enough you know it is so therapeutic and so helpful and has helped so many people um and i know it sounds silly wrapped up in a fun painting party but it really does help people so maybe you know you can reach somebody at a restaurant where they might not go to a chain building but they might come have drinks with their friends or maybe right. at a church where you know they would have never thought of it but now their women's group is getting together so don't ever underestimate you know what God's plan is for you and how you could reach people and share his light through that. So thanks for saying that, Debbie. Oh, my pleasure. Cause um, you know, you gotta believe and I believe in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it was great talking to you and everybody out there, please leave your biggest takeaway and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Okay. Bye.